In tonight's reading, we will try to reckon with what we are reading. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan, on this Thursday, the 21st of December, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we end our day with God's Word in prayer. As we do, this is now week 51, day 4, of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to Revelation chapter 16. We are almost to the end. We're through the uh, we're, we're coming to the third cycle of, of seven signs or seven seals or seven trumpets. Here it's the seven bowls of God's wrath um, that mark the end. And this is now the end of the end, if you will, to hearken back to yesterday's reading. Uh, but here, this is, uh, this is a pretty brutal chapter, things that it describes straight up. And so... Um, it's a it's a good opportunity to reckon with what we're reading and uh, the judgment that we are reading uh, that we're reading about that's being described here. So let's turn to our text. Revelation 16. Then I heard lo- then I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, "Go and pour out on the earth." the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became like the blood of a corpse, and every living thing died that was in the sea. The third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, Just are you, O Holy One, who who is and who was, for you brought these judgments, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. And I heard the altar saying, Yes, the Lord, yes, Lord God, the Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were scorched by the fierce heat, and they cursed the name of God who had power over these plagues. They did not repent and give him glory. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in anguish and cursed the God of heaven for their pain and sores. They did not repent of their deeds. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are demonic spirits, performing signs, who go abroad to the kings of the whole world, to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. And they assembled them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a great earthquake such as there had never been since man was on the earth, so great was that earthquake. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and God remembered Babylon the great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found, and great hailstones, about one hundred pounds each, fell from heaven on people, And they cursed God for the plague of the hail, because the plague was so severe. 
thus far Revelation 16. So as I said, this sounds quite brutal, doesn't it? One example of wrath and punishment and suffering after the next, after the next, after the next. This seems just brutal. It, it seems to justify the objections of those who say that if God is the way Scripture describes him, then he is a beast, he is a monster to pour out such suffering on innocent people. So how do we reckon with that? How do we come to grips with the sort of suffering that we see poured out on the earth here in Revelation chapter 16, for example, not to mention so many other places as well? Well, first, we have the reminder, as we heard here in chapter 16, that what they are receiving is really simply what's just. For all the complaints that God is unjust, is cruel, is evil, is unloving, to pour out judgment like this, at the same time, the reality is that if God allowed the evil that we do on this earth to go unpunished, that would be an even greater evil. So the first response, the first way we reckon with this rather difficult chapter is simply to remember that what is being poured out here, literally and figuratively, is what's just. The other side to that, too, that we must not overlook, is that as horrible as this is, that same God who is commanding these punishments to be poured out was willing to suffer even worse for them. His desire has always been for them to turn back to him in repentance and faith. And that is the purpose of each of these bowls of wrath poured out on the earth, so that they might repent. But again and again, they refuse. That is the great tragedy here. We can shake our fists at God for being angry and cruel and unjust, but the reality is that the fault is entirely our own. He desired to suffer these examples of God's wrath himself in your place, but so many refused. But for those who do believe, yes, this was for you, Christ, this is a reminder that Christ suffered all of this and worse for you in your place so that in this day all you will know is the hope and the confidence and the assurance that your Savior is returning soon. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. As always, thank you for joining us as we end our day with God's word and prayer. God willing, we will see you tomorrow at this same time. In the meantime, God's blessings on your night.